Stop. Such missed opportunity. Oh my god. And then, oh my god. The ending. Now look, uh, John Blake, I really do not like him in this movie. For, for a multitude of reasons. He's literally a Gary Stu character. The kid has no flaws at all. Never makes a single mistake or misstep except to maybe not force someone to listen to him once in a while. If he's got any flaws, it's just the fact that he's, you know, a good cop. Literally. And that's not a flaw. He's like a male Bella Swan in that sense, okay? Only less annoying. Well, what he can act. But, I mean, the character as written, no flaws except for, you know, one that's actually a positive attribute. It, it's ridiculous. Okay? And they're calling him a hothead, and he's like the only one who's remaining calm in this entire situation. But I, I, I really do not like him as a written character, okay? But then, in the end, when he has literally left the Batcave, and, I mean, the end of The Dark Knight Rises, he fakes his own death. Batman fakes his own death, and he goes to the Riviera to kick it with Selena. Okay? Kick back, relax, spend the rest of his life. Now, first of all, you are the world-famous, rich, multi-billionaire Bruce Wayne. The moment you walked out of your mansion where no one had seen you for eight years, people recognized you. Everyone in the media recognized you. But you're going to fake your death, but then show yourself in an open-air cafe. And no one recognized you. And I know that people then try to play the, oh, well, wait, what if they weren't, what if he really is dead and Alfred just saw what he wanted to see? Look at the visions from before when Alfred said he could have swore he saw Master Bruce there. He didn't. It was always like maybe something around the edge or the back of the head, but then when the guy would turn to talk to the waiter, it was never him. Not only was it Bruce turning to talk to the waiter, and clearly Bruce, but Selena. And it was an extended shot of their faces, okay? It wasn't a phantom glance, nothing like that. It was a complete total shot of both of them. And he wasn't even freaking around when Bruce and Selena were a major thing, okay? So why in the world would Alfred be having visions of, you know, him and Selena? That, 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 that doesn't, that really doesn't make too much sense to me, you know? I, I don't get it. I, I just don't get that. That 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 can't be the case. So clearly they're still alive and there. Now, I know people can also try to justify this as, well, they're trying to be more realistic. And it's hilarious because they keep going back and forth depending on this between being realistic in that sense in that, oh, we have to completely change Batman's motivation because nobody would really be like that. So, you know, basically, in other words, screw who the character is. We're going for what Joe Schmo on the street would have done. Joe Schmo on the street wouldn't have put on a cape and cowl and run around fighting crime. Okay? That, that, that takes a special breed of crazy. And yes, Bruce is slightly insane, and it's something he's admitted to himself. But, <laughs> when you, oh my god, when you have him quit and then leave the cave to some rookie cop that he barely knows. And then on top of it, you make it so that his real first name is actually Robin. That is, oh god. In The Dark Knight Returns, yes, he had a Robin who was something rather inexperienced. Her name is Carrie Kelly, but she was at least acrobatic. She could at least somewhat handle herself in a fight against the regular thug. Um, she was very willing to learn. She was very teachable. She was very subordinate. We could use that, definitely. But in the end, at the end of it all, and this is what I mean, and this is a happy ending for Batman. That's what people don't realize. Batman doesn't, does wind up faking his own death. Batman winds up, you know, and everyone knows it was Bruce Wayne, you know. But see, then Bruce takes what money he had left that was stashed away, buys all this gear, goes and sets up in this cave way out there, brings his Robin with him and a bunch of his new disciples, the sons of the Batman, and starts trying to teach them, to train them, to, you know, take his place, to do what he did, to go out there and fight injustice that the law can't fight. And it even ends with, with that line, 
This will be a good life, I think. Good enough. That, and he, he had a quasi grin on his face. I mean, that is a happy ending for the Batman. That is what he would want to do. Every incarnation of Bruce, even when he can't do something himself, when is he, when he has been laid up, when he has been unable to continue, or even in the alternate future that is in Batman Begins, have you ever known him to be content to just stand do nothing? No, he wants to be teaching. He wants to look for someone to pass it on to. And when he finally finds that person, he does it. It's in his nature. It's not like him to just sit back and watch everything that can. It would, it would eat at him. And he certainly wouldn't just abandon his city to go party with a hot chick. I'm sorry, he wouldn't. Okay? There was just so much wrong with this movie. There was so much wrong in the theme of the first two movies compared, you know, and then this happens. The first two mesh together so well and then this. I mean, and the whole Batman's a symbol thing. The symbol that he was referring to in the first movie is a symbol in the sense that he was not just a man, that he could not be corrupted, that he didn't have an identity that could go after. He didn't have family that could go after. He didn't have a business or a home they could go after because they wouldn't know who he is. He was a symbol meant to rally the people, to give them hope, to show them that they didn't have to just live under the scum that they could fight back. Not a symbol in the sense that anyone can literally take it on. Then the symbolism of the entire thing is gone, and it just becomes an over-literal, well, pile that essentially talks down to you like you're stupid. Like, oh, he said symbol, therefore anyone can take it. No. And that is quite literally what got translated onto the screen. Oh, yeah. And I mean... And you know the kid's not even necessarily going to be Robin. You know he's taking over straight off the bat as the new Batman or Robin or Nightwing or whatever the hell persona you think you want to give him. Because Gordon was given a new bat signal at the end, too. You know it. This, this, there was just so much potential there. It could have been so great. They could have led up to something so big and just, boom, blew our minds. And don't cap it. Don't end it. Let it bleed into the comics. Let people think, oh, hey, this is how it all starts. Now let's go read the comics. That would have been brilliant. Even if no one never made another movie after that. Brilliant. But he didn't. And he felt the need to cap it off and create his own little universe. And he just screwed up so bad in the process. And on top of that, when he took The Dark Knight Returns, the odds of us actually seeing a live-action adaptation of that now, <laughs> gone. We're not going to see a good, accurate live-action Dark Knight Returns for a long time now because of that. We've got the animated one that's out now, sure, but we're not going to get any kind of live-action adaptation of it, ever. I mean, that's taken. If, if they take it, oh, we're just trying to capitalize up The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> you see the problem now? Uh, I, uh, I'm hoping this helped you guys understand why I don't like that movie, okay? I'm not coming from an angle of blind hate. I'm not coming from an angle of, you know, some people even accuse me of just being a fanboy of The Amazing Spider-Man and being mad because this one did better than that. I had no illusions that the first installment of a reboot series was going to do better than the cap-off film of a trilogy, okay? I, I never expected that. I mean, even Spider-Man 3, which was a turd, was actually the most financially successful of all the Spider-Man films, despite the backlash. They were actually going to try to continue that, despite the backlash. But see, trilogies, the cap of the trilogy is usually the most lucrative, especially if it has a really good second film leading into it, which, which Rises did. I never held any illusion that The Amazing Spider-Man would even do half as good as Rises did. And frankly, that movie actually exceeded my expectations, too. Really. But that's not the point. The point is, I'm not coming from just some weird angle of blind hate here, guys. I know what I'm talking about. My opinions are informed. I'm not someone that you can just brush off and say, oh, you don't understand Batman. I do. I do. 
And I can understand if you're going to end up wanting to give him a happy ending, but that's what Frank Miller gave him in The Dark Knight Returns, a, a, a happy ending for Batman. Batman's got a very different view of the world than you or I. He's got a very different specific will from you and I. He's got a very different mentality. What, what would please him is not necessarily what would please us. We might find it obscenely dull. But he would love it. And that was his new lot in life, and he loved it. He liked it. It was a reason for him to keep going. It literally got him out of his suicidal funk that continued throughout the entire time he was Batman. He was literally counting down the moments until he died. He wanted a glorious death. But no, he found a reason to keep going because of that. That's his happy ending. And in this, it's, I'm going to go on a party with a hot chick. See ya. I mean, come on. Which one's more that? Even realistically. Well, at any rate, that's really all I have to say about that. And, um, needless to say, this is going to be a two part. We're not going to have fun trying to find where to split it. But, um, in the meantime, uh, you guys take care, and I will catch you later.